This is part two on the uh, articulated wheel loader build. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, I definitely recommend checking that out. I'll have that link down in the video description. Uh, basically, in that video, I talked about just kind of going through it, explaining on how stuff is going to work and what every component on here does and uh, how everything is routed. Uh, but since last video, I got this hydraulic reservoir mounted. Um, I have a couple holes here in the side that I'm going to put a zip tie through. And we're going to do the same thing there just to hold this in place uh, nice and solid. Uh, basically, it's a PVC pipe with cap. Uh, it's four inch. There's a reducer down there. Uh, this costs like $40 for this pipe, which is ridiculous. Um, so you got, of course, cap, like a clean out for like a sewer. A uh, little four inch pipe, about, I don't know, 12 inches long or so. A four inch to two inch reducer. And then there is a bushing that goes on the end of that with a uh, one inch pipe or a one and a half inch pipe, something like that. And then a uh, one and a quarter inch um, pipe adapter or a pipe to hose adapter. And that goes into the hydraulic pump. So that was interesting. Um, I can't remember if last time it had the radiator on it, but it has a radiator on it. Um, it's not gonna do a whole lot, but I mean, it'll do something that's better than not having one. Uh, my forklift I built with the same exact uh, hydraulic unit and stuff in it. The oil does get pretty hot in the summer. Uh, so since I have a radiator, radiator I'm going to put that on. Uh, I do have to pull it off, however, to get this engine in there. So I ordered this off eBay. It was like $285. Um, a lot cheaper than like anything else out there. Uh, I do have an electric start kit I'm going to put on this. Hopefully it actually fits. Uh, it's the most generic thing I have ever seen. So it just says 15.0 horsepower. Uh, it doesn't say the CC on it anywhere, but it's supposed to be a 420. Uh, there's right here, there's normally like a little sticker that says, you know, date of manufacture. Okay, so I made a little bit of progress on it. Um, there was these adapters right here uh, to hold the uh, old Kawasaki uh, V-twin to the, uh, basically the whole engine mount thing with the uh, transmission. So I cut that off and I found this uh, like quarter inch thick plate, which is what's uh, the jack is getting, you know, pinned up there between that and the engine. Um, it just happens to be that it's at the right level that I can just weld this on there. Uh, if anything, the engine is slightly too low. So I could just put a couple washers under there to make sure it's actually centered uh, with the coupler. And then I'll have to put some metal here to make up for the gap between the plate and this uh, square tubing on the frame. Um, and then, of course, right here can just be welded directly on. Um, I looked at pictures, or actually I went over and I looked at my forklift that I built about a year ago and how that's made. But on this side, you can see a lot more of uh, how this goes. So this, it's just kind of hard to tell where anything goes. But from looking at this, it's going to be impossible with the camera. But it kind of looks like the engine might be a little bit too low if it's already not right on. So... I'm just going to weld this plate right here uh, on, and uh, I'll come back once I get that crankshaft adapter. Okay, so I got the whole engine plate welded in like I was mentioning. Uh, so that turned out pretty nice. I already got the holes drilled for the engine, so that turned out really good. I did get my crankshaft adapter. I cut it in half because I'm like, hey, then I have one to use for something else. Uh, because I only it was like three inches long, and I only needed about an inch and a half uh, for this little coupler. So I just cut it in half, so now I have a second one for something else. I have it just loose so I can get it exactly where it needs to be. I uh, got an electric start put on this engine. And while I was doing that, I figured out a little bit about it. So if you see right here, it says 190F, and then there's like a cast number below it. Um, I looked up 190F engine, and it turns out this is a Lifen 420, which... Uh, for like a Chinese Honda clone is one of the biggest, best brands that makes them. So that was pretty cool, even though it doesn't say that on it. I'm not sure why they didn't put that on it in the first place. More people would probably buy it, but I uh, thought that was kind of cool. So I'll probably be buying more of those in the future. So um, I did order a hydraulic valve uh, for the, the loader part of this. Uh, so that's not here yet. I just ordered it last night. So of course it's not going to be here yet. I'm not going to wait to run it, so I have this cobbled up. Um, I didn't have a uh, coupler, so I have this valve that I have zip-tied to the dash. 
uh, just to keep it from falling down. I uh, definitely don't want to turn that. Um, so this three-quarter hose just kind of runs back to the reservoir. Um, it's PVC pipe, I think I showed this before. I got this zip tied down, so that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, hoses just kind of come through the side and they bend down, so the oil will go down instead of straight across and come out the cap. Uh, so I'll have to put some oil in there. I have a bunch of it, so I can do that. Uh, but anyway, I need to get this engine put in here. So I'm going to get that bolted in. Um, I do have to put a couple washers under it uh, just to make sure the coupler is lined up exactly perfect. So you just saw me uh, driving it around. Uh, since then, I uh, upgraded these two bolts to hold the pivot point together because the ones that I had were too small. These are a high grade bolt. Uh, so those will be quite a bit better. It's only half inch. I wish it was bigger. I can always build the hole bigger, but that should be good enough for now. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do here is the actual uh, the loader, um, which I'm gonna bring you around back to the bone yard and see what we got for metal back there. I'm gonna do some measurements first see how long it needs to be and what exactly I should do and then uh, we'll go look for some metal. So looking back here in the boneyard I need something about three foot long uh, for the the metal for the loader. So I have these uh, reel mower frames which these two here are the ones that um, I cut the hydraulic uh, wheel motors out of. So it'd be cool to use one of these um, but sadly I have to cut all this stuff off that's welded on it. I mean, it's doable um, without buying something because um, I want to do this today without going to get anything. Uh, these are like three feet long from the back, back there to here. So that would work. Um, I don't know what else I have. I do have the uh, roll bar or the, the rops from these, which is pretty thick. See how thick that is? That's pretty thick. So see how long this is. There's more of these uh, metal things I use for the articulated part of it. Um, three feet's right there. So I did actually end up using one of those frames I was showing you uh, in the last clip. Um, I did get some tilt, uh, this little tilt bracket, which uh, the plan is basically if I was to put forks on here, I could just put forks on it. Or if I was to put a bucket on it, I could just bolt the bucket to this plate. Um seems like it doesn't tilt quite far enough so that kind of sucks um well it tilts plenty here but once as you get it raised up to about here it's like level it doesn't like dump so um which i probably could adjust that just these two little uh bars there need to be a little bit longer um otherwise all of this is just tacked i'm waiting to actually use the bigger welder and uh weld everything up solid i use these pillow black bearings uh basically to uh, make the loader a little bit more sturdy than just uh, putting bolts through and having it pivot on a bolt. Um, I welded some one inch rods together because I didn't have one long enough. Uh, so that's just temporary until that'll come apart and then I'll get a solid piece to go across to pivot on. Um, but that's it for that for now. Uh, I have to order a hydraulic um, cylinder to go from down there or so to some place like here. Uh, because I don't have anything long enough that's actually going to work. Uh, this one here is only a 4 inch. So that's it's acting in a very weird way so that it can... Uh, this one here is only a 4 inch. Um, it's positioned in such a weird way where it's 4 inches of going out and it has to move in like 10 inches. Uh, the bottom piece. So it's, it's not at the greatest angle but it should be plenty powerful just to tilt the bucket or forks. Um, and the next thing for me to do is this exhaust sounds terrible. Uh, it sounds like a pressure washer. So I'm going to put a different exhaust on here because I really don't want this to sound like a pressure washer. 
Um, and I need to figure out a spot for a battery, which I have no idea. I did some measuring last night. I really wanted to put it like right here since it's right next to the starter, but there's just not enough room for it. So I'm going to do some work on exhaust and possibly do something with a battery. Um, and I'm going to come back and I'll show you an update on what I get figured out. Okay, so I got a bunch of stuff done since last time with the camera on. Um, the muffler, I tried switching out the muffler. I wanted to put a stack on it. Uh, but where the muffler would be, or the stack, where the seat is, uh, it gets too hot in the back of the seats right there. So it doesn't work out. So I made a battery tray that didn't really work out that great. So I have a little bit more of an improvement I have to make on that. So the battery right now is in there crooked and I have to have it on this piece of metal. Otherwise it shorts out on the frame right here. So that kind of sucks, but that's not a big deal to fix. Um, I got the wiring in, so there's a horn. Um, key switch is down here and then an hour meter. Um, uh, there's going to be, of course, like a metal body that goes over all of this, like a hood. And then uh, the key switch and stuff will get permanently mounted at that point. I got a throttle hooked up and a choke. And then up here... I got the uh, hydraulic cylinder and stuff mounted for the tilt. Um, and then in the next video, I'm going to mount the hydraulic valve, which I just got. Uh, that's going to mount right here. And uh, I have a hydraulic cylinder uh, to go down here to come up. Um, that should be coming within the next couple days. I can mount that. Um, I have some metal right here. I'm going to make some forks. Uh, those are just going to attach this plate that I made. And then I can have some forks on it. Um, the rest of this metal is, uh, I have another project I'm going to be building before too long, um, a mini excavator. Uh, so I've got this pretty heavy duty tubing here to make the boom of the excavator. I've got that piece, that piece, um, some other stuff here to make the frame and stuff. It should be all here. So I went out and bought a bunch of stuff here. So hopefully I've got most of the stuff for that project. Otherwise, that's going to be it for this uh, episode of this. And thanks for watching.